And this morning, President Joe Biden says the U.S. was not behind what appeared to be an armed insurrection in Russia over the weekend. It's not clear this morning where the leader of the uprising is located, but as Doug Luzeta reports from Washington this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin remains in power. Doug, good morning. Good morning. Well, the man who led that uprising may, in fact, be in Belarus right now. No confirmation on that. But if that's the case, that means the deal that he had to kind of stand, to stand down may have held true. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Russian warlord who leads the Wagner Group and ultimately backed down from a march on Moscow just days ago, may have made his way out of Russia. Flight trackers kept a close eye on a plane he uses as it flew to neighboring Belarus. After the uprising, Prigozhin said he wasn't trying to topple Putin. The goal was to prevent the destruction of Wagner and to hold to account those who, with their unprofessional actions, made a huge amount of mistakes during the special military operation. For his part, Putin is trying to project business as usual, meeting with his defense chief, among others, and addressing his nation. The organizers of the rebellion, betraying their country, their people, betrayed those who were lured into the crime. President Biden carefully steered clear of the entire incident. We made clear that we were not involved. We had nothing to do with it. This was part of a struggle within the Russian system. The real winner here may be Ukraine, as it continues to fight off a Russian onslaught. Putin may survive, but his iron grip may have been weakened. I think you let these internal things play out. It definitely represents a weakness uh, on Putin's part, uh, and that's a good thing for us. Yeah, perhaps a good thing, although, you know, the administration looks at this very cautiously because if Putin were to suddenly fall out of power uh, in Russia, there's a question about who would replace him.